and I'll be showing you how to design a residential, a private residential building that has a bent floor. I'm going to design it and I'm going to roof it. Just follow us and follow these important steps as we do that. You're going to have a two floor, a two story floor. It's going to be a two story building, a two story floor, whatever you call it in your area or in your country. So, one of the first things I do, I do three important things, but let me first of all join this elevation line together and ensure that it's on structure, it's on stretch as you highlight or as you try to join them. So, I'm going to join this. Remember, I'm using my shift key. I'm holding my shift key to be able to highlight these things easily. I'm holding my shift key to be able to highlight this easily. So, once I'm done joining this, and I believe you know the importance of we joining this together. I'll just do three important steps. Number one is control seven, which is my story settings. I'll change my st from three meters or so three thousand millimeter to three thousand one fifty. Now I'm adding one fifty because of my slab thickness. Because of my slab thickness, remember the ground floor plan is going to carry a slab, the upper the first floor plan is going to carry a slab, and the second story is not carrying any slab, it's just roof. So we're going to be 3150. 150 is for the slab thickness. I'm proposing 150, but the structural engineer might use or might design one below or above 150. So we're going to click OK. The next step I do is to come to options. Project preference changes to di change the dimensions to from, mi from meter to millimeter from one to zero high zero decimals. Okay, I'll come back to options again. Element attribute and add one or two new pen width. Like I'll just change this to 0.6. and this will be like 0.8. You can create as much pen weight as you want. You can find that in our previous videos how to create a new line of pen weight. Okay, then I'll start my design properly. Right now, you can see the floor plan in my screen already. So, this is the ground floor plan of the private residential building. So, I'm going to start this design by using the wall. But before that, I'm going to extend this a little bit to be able to see all I want my design tools, viewpoint tools, and document tools. So I'll double click on wall and start my design. Remember, it says it has carried 3150, which is the proposed story height I gave it to him. But the 150 is because of my slab, not my wall. I'm going to write minus 150. So you need to offset 150 down for me to be able to add my slab to this design. So after that, I'll change my wall structure to be basic. I'll change my generic structure or generic structure to Mansory block filler. Then I love the geometric method. I want it to be straight. Now I'll change my wall thickness to 225 mm, which is 9 inches. Then I'll change my reference line to be center to be able to enable me put my grid on my wall through the center. You can change yours to whatever you feel like outside face or inner face. Or any of them are okay. So I'll come back to floor plan display okay it's okay everything should be okay on that floor plan and sections i'll just convert to cut surfaces i'll make i'll change this none to foreground to be able to enable me put an hash on my wall remember i'm using a mansory block and one of the features of mansory block in in floor plan is that it should have a continuous hashing so i've done that then i'll change my line my wall line thickness rather to be around 0.8 to be bold enough then i can also go to my 3d model and make use of brick white material for now and link it make all the brick white material after now my design i can now edit the color to whatever i feel like doing it and i'll click ok so right now i'm done with my wall settings for now then i can start my design by drawing a vertical line and a horizontal line so I've got the vertical and I'm drawing the horizontal. Then you can see this is a proper mastery block while designing your floor plan. 
I can also I, I can actually view it in through line width to be to enable me to see my actual line width. Remember my wall line width is 0.8 and my hash line width is 0.13 but right now you look as if they are equal because i've not enabled through line width so this is through line width when you right click you're going to see through line width so you can now see this is the difference so this is the actual 0 0.8 and this is now the 0 0.13 so you can, I can actually draw like this or I remove the true line width. Let me start from my main launch. The main launch has a thickness of a length of 6,000 rather. So I'm going to add 6,000. If you want to be, see all this you want, you just enable all these things here. Then we have thickness, a distance of 6,000. And I'm going to add my wall thickness because this is a wall not a line if you don't add a wall thickness it's going to be less than 6000 you can confirm using your measure tool so it's 6000 you can see so if you do not add your wall thickness like moving your wall over by its wall thickness it's going to be less than the actual value so we'll move over to the dining and veranda which has a distance of 2 4 so control shift d that's how we using to, to duplicate a wall so i've duplicated this 2 4 and i have my kitchen which is 2 6 ensure that your wall is straight like the angle is always at zero depending on your archival version you are using just follow the same steps So I'm done with this side. That other side is a cantilever. So it's going to be designed at the upper floor plan. And I can trim this using control key. Then I can come over to my launch. This side has a distance of 4,600. Then I can extend this a little bit. So let me also do for this dining and kitchen on veranda and dining rather so these are the distance of 900 so i can trim this using my control key also so i think i'm done with the things happening at the back okay dining also have a distance of 2400 2400 so this is where the dining ended all right so right now we're going to do it for the visitors toilet has a very distance of 800 its width is 800 mm I've done that so I come over and then start from the back side okay or well, before then I think I've, I've gotten the distance of this toilet so let's get the distance of the other width so from the entrance port we are seeing 3270 control shift d so we need to have 3270 right here so this is not the total distance of the building so this is where the building is to end so all this can be trimmed off all right so what else can we do very fast so remember if you can watch this particular wall right here is on the same grid it's on the same line with the ones coming from the dining and veranda so from here we can start some design so this is in between the bedroom and the toilet so 
but the bedroom has a 4050 4050 and add the water thickness okay done then the stair case has a thickness of 18 18 remember it's at angle 2 so it's not straight you can escape and make sure that's at angle 0 make sure that your lines are straight Okay, so I'm done with this. So this is now the stair hall, which is joining this. I can just use intersect to join these together, and I can trim all I don't want. So this is stair hall. Oh, so I've seen how design coming out little by little so we have a toilet right here at around 1350 1350 so we are done with that can also trim this okay so we have our toilet width of 27 2170 rather 2170. This one must be on 90 degrees to ensure that you're straight. So I've done that. Remember, I'm always adding my wall thickness because this is a wall and not a line. This is a wall, you must always add your wall thickness. Remember, the dimension from the floor plan we're drawing with is an in to in dimension, so it's not giving us the wall thickness, it's not adding the wall thickness to the dimension. Once I'm done, I can now start designing for the ante room. The ante room has a length of three thousand. Done, which extends to the toilet also. You can trim this and this also. Then we have. An entrance porch of also three thousand. Three thousand. Wow. So I think we are almost done with two walls. This design. So let's see what is left. Okay. The visitor's toilet has a length of two four. Two four hundred. So we're going to add the wall thickness also. So we can trim all this. So we can check what have we not done. So we are, I think we are done with all the walls needed in this design. Yeah, we are done with all the walls. Anyone we figure out what we're not done, we just place it as we continue. So I can centralize my design now to be around the center. It's not compulsory, just for my own preference. So once I'm done with my walls, I can now go back to my what is next? Doors, windows, okay. Doors is next. So double click on doors and start placing doors. So these are wonderful doors of, of Atlantis 25. Okay, 25 rather. So this is at door 25. I'm going to make it of this. The width and the height is 900 by 21. You can also change this. So I'm going to place my doors in my single leaf doors. I'm going to make it of 900 by 21. Then my C to storage should be zero. I'm going to make it zero. This is so it's enable not to have any offsets from the ground. Then I can also choose a door leaf I want. Also on the hand, I can also choose as much as I want from right here. So you can see a lot of door designs. A lot of them. Just choose the ones you want according to your preference and use and use. So I have a lot of doors, over 50 of them. So I'm going to pick any one I want. I'm going to use them. So I have choose this and I can move over to the next settings. My handles, I also have a lot of handles also. So I can, I can choose this also and I can just continue. I can also, if you can see, if you choose, you can see this line over here. It determines the direction of opening. If you don't want to, 
see this line you can also remove it by clicking opening line so i'm done with that and i can also move over to my door colors or door materials and change it if i want to so right now the material right here is wood pine wood pine green if it's wood pine green horizontal you can see them so i'm going to leave it like that i'm not going to change my door material because i want it to be a wooden door for now and when i go to rendering software i can make use of other rendering materials so i'm going to click okay this is okay this satisfies me you can also change your handle materials and other things also in your archive card so right now i can come so right now i can start placing my doors okay and i'll come here and see the swing i'm done with this at the veranda slash kitchen i'm done with this you can zoom clearly carefully if it's not well placed you can also adjust it there's nothing wrong if you not place it very accurately you can also adjust it so the next door is one in my bedroom right here swinging at the direction so we have another door entering from the kitchen swinging in the direction and also adjust this also to lap at the wall so we have one over here so right now i'm done with all the doors of 900 by 2100 i want to choose a door of 750 mm so, so i just change my doors width to 750 mm at this setting over here for my toilet or wc so i can start placing now i have one here and i have one right here So right now I'm done with all the doors in my WC. So now let me go to my double leaf doors. My double doors. I have one at the entrance and one at the main lounge. So I'll go back to door settings and look for a double door. This is not double door, this is double, this is a door with side light. So I'm going to look for a double door. So this is a double door. This is also a double door. So I'm going to change the width to Okay, around one five is okay. So we will we'll leave it as one five by two one. Then to change the materials to whatever we want. That sit us best. Then move next. Change this one also. So whatever we want. Okay, you can see it's coming out uniform handles yes if you want to separate handles you can also go with that i have placed the handles also move next and also remove this line like i did in the other time then now the materials are also wood pine horizontal okay and i'm done with the, the double doors i'll just place them as quickly as possible okay one thing i did not do okay is that once i'm not sure is that you can also change the door leaf size to be to one can be smaller and bigger i think i've done that in my previous video also check our videos of doors and door settings so right now we're done with all the doors in our ground floor plan so let's move over to windows so i'll double click on windows also so after double clicking i'll just pick windows i want so let's make it of double leaf windows double search windows you can see one right here so start clicking on double search windows i can now edit this to be around one two by one two so i want my width and my height to be one two by one two so the you can see for the flop plan is actually a small window so you can now change the seal to story height this is the height from the ground level to the bottom window 
and for me i want the design to i want the door at the higher and the window to be on the same level so remember the level the height of the door is two one and now i've placed the height of my window to be one two so one minus two one from one to have have 900 so therefore this is going to be what 900 now I'm gonna, then i come over to my window settings and just do one or two settings as quickly as possible so you can start so this is actually the first setting if you want to change anything right here but we're not doing anything here this is for upper lower transom i think we have done a lot of videos on this just check on our previous videos if you want to add transom to your windows so you come over to open and type nothing i can click on uniform frame width i leave this as uniform search i don't want to make any changes on my glass so you can also change the window handle you want so i've picked the window handle you can also make the miniature ventilated then i can also remove this line over here by clicking on opening line now this is going to be my windows material settings now i'm going to change these um, my window materials from wood pine horizontal remember my door materials are also wood pine green horizontal um, so i want to change my window material to be different from my wall materials the reason be that when you go to rendering software you will not be able to edit different tools or shapes or design element that has the same material so i can actually change this even to a white color maybe i want my my window materials to carry a white material i want to change all this to white so I want my window, the material, everything, the frames, the sash, I want everything to carry white. So why this is the glass is okay. Then the handle you can also change if you want. Then I will click OK. I will start placing my windows. So we have a window right here. And we have another one right here. You can actually make it to be more uniform if you want to and check that in our previous videos so remember our windows should be opened outside opened outside so we're going to come and place this one right here We have another the kitchen. We have another here. We have one also here. Okay, we have two in this bedroom. Control Z. Or escape to be opened outside. So we have one in this dining over here, in the ante room rather. Okay. So what is next is um what is next is a smaller window in the ante room. So we have an ante room we have smaller windows you know ante room of the same height but in with smaller windows i'm going to choose a single casement window i maybe make it around 600 mm by one two also it'll be of the same height so c2 story is still 900 correct then I can just do one or two quick settings to change the materials to white. Okay. So to maybe add a handle, natural ventilation, then remove the opening line and change my materials to white materials, make the uniform, to make the windows materials uniform. Then once I'm done, I just place the windows. So I have one here.
open outside I have another here open outside all right I can actually adjust this to the edge and this also to the edge so once I'm done I think I have just the toilet windows left I also come back to my window settings again I still want to use this window to my toilet window so I just change the width and the height to 600 by 600 also because it's going to be a smaller window in the toilet or WC area now we see high value to be 1.5 because when you add 1.5 to 600 it's going to give it 2.1 then maintaining the same settings I click OK and I'll place one right here and another right here right correct so right now i've placed all my doors and windows so what is left is i want to place my arches you know from the between the dining to the kitchen we have an arc something like a beam like curved or straight arc so we're going to place one right here and we'll have another here and another here and here so come back to windows too i used to make use of windows for arches because windows which reveal to me this short touches because windows will show these short dash lines these dash lines i want to make of windows but the windows i make use of is or are called empty window opening so we are seeing a lot of empty window openings you can make use of any of your choice we have arch top ellipse ellipse top gothic arch half round down to rectangle window opening and circular all shapes are here so right now i'm going to click on rectangle window opening once we click on this we can then select the width and the height remember for me i will not edit the width because i can just edit it from my floor plan after placing them but my height is going to be 2550. It's going to be a little bit above. It's going to be a little bit above my window level. Because one of the reasons of this arch is, is that I can see so that light or air can pass through it. So it's going to be 2550. Then I can also put my seal for a little bit zero because it's starting from the zero. Then I don't think I do more settings. So let's just check our floor plans settings. Okay. I can also change. Okay. Let me see. Then I click on override object lines, override object paints. I change this to a dash line. Then I click OK. Yeah, I click OK. And I place one right here. I can also extend this. Like I said, I can extend it for my floor plan. So you can see that this looks architecturally correct. So but in our floor, but in our front elevation, remember that this is a an entrance porch. Therefore, it will not have the same height as the other one. This one is going to carry a different height of around the same height of the wall. Yes, the same height of the wall or the same height of the story. This is a, this is a duplex, this is a residential duplex. So this arch is over here will not be 2550. Is not the arches that we can see we can, we can compare with these two this arch is going to carry a height of the wall so it's going to be around 3150 also so i'll click ok it's going to be a full and complete arch so right now we're done with windows so let's quickly put our staircase and move over so we we'll double click on staircase also so we look for stairs. So this is a stair here. Yeah? So 
when we click on stairs when we click on stairs we we'll change our stair width remember our stair width in this drawing is one eight though it's small we're going to follow what we have and you can see it has an opening line it has an opening line of around let me call it let's make it 100 so 100 minus 18 will give us 17 so our stair width is now 850 all right number of risers 20 is okay riser heights around 150 is okay instead of 158 even though they are almost of the same values then once we are done with that we can now choose a baseline option to be in the center yeah which is 20 this is 850 this is 150 okay it's actually automatically doing this because of my settings then once i'm done with this i also choose what i want to happen in my lander so i'm going to from the drawing the landing is plain it does not have all this um it does not have stairs at the lander side so it's plain then i can um and i click on ok our stairs starts from around here okay this is a baseline option i clicked so you can change our baseline option come to staircase again change our baseline options to this at zero there is no offset i'm going to use a line to know our starting point remember this is 4 2 30. Ensure it's straight 4 2 30. Okay. So this is our wall. So it starts from around here. I click on stairs. Right from around here. Once it gets here, it has an offset. yeah so these are staircase and we completely designed okay one thing we'd not do also is our window for the staircase so i've done that also so right now i've placed our staircase and everything i think the window width right here is 1000 changes to 1000 And see we are done with most of the things. Let's just add test, but we don't need to add dimension, let's just add only test. So it can be very fast to go to the upper floor. So I change it to buy free, just your choice. So on body tab then just start writing. Double click main launch. Dining Vara as written there, kitchen lobby bedroom. WC Ante Room Entrance Porch. We'll neglect the column for now. Once we are done, we'll just add a column. I think. We are done. I think we have a stair hall right here within. So this is now a stair hall. We can actually reduce the size 
of your test if it's so big if it's so bold you can reduce it remember I just the same settings I'll reduce it over here so right now we are done with our test just a visitor toilet here yeah Right now we are going to the upper floor, you can see the through the through line weight and see how beautiful it's coming out in graphics and everything. So right now we are going to go to the upper floor. Now this is the upper floor and only the staircase is showing because it's because it's have to show. You know the staircase have to show. Yes. So now what I'm going to do first is to Highlight all this, copy and paste, and right click. Okay, let's press the enter button. Why we're pasting it because the upper floor plan most at times are designed from the ground floor plan. So I'm going to design this from the ground floor plan and. We can, we can actually see what we have done in our 3D to see if we have progress or not. Yeah, we have progress. So this is just what we have done so far. What we have done so far. And uh, it's coming out bit by bit, finer and better. So let's move to our upper floor plan and start designing. Right now you can see the upper floor plan rather not the upper floor plan, the first floor plan, because this is a two-story building. The second floor plan is a bent floor. So right now we are ready. Yes, we are ready. But one thing I would love us to do is to design with speed now. So we have to design as quickly as we can. So right now we don't have this double door right here again. Our distance of our master bedroom is the more master bedroom in our launch. Stuff from our master bedroom, we have a 4050. Let's confirm it's exact. So 4050. Let's add this. So I'll trim of this. Then we have a back only of 1055. Control Shift D, one thousand fifty-five. Control Z, I'll add the word thickness and also intercept is using the intercept too. All right, so we have a master bedroom of width three thousand nine seventy. I'm just trying to just follow the same settings. So, okay, I can delete all these now. So, we have a toilet right here of one eight. Okay, they have the same dimensions. This one eight, so I can delete all this. So right now, this other area has a WC of one four. So we have to be very fast to finish up this as quickly as possible. And this is no more a kitchen. We we'll just keep deleting. Okay. Okay, this is a lobby. All right, so we have a width of this WC to be two three. All right, why here we have a back only of one of one thousand. I think it's following 
just we just need to extend this no need of control shift d you can just extend this since it's since it has the same so just extend this though the back only is not even carrying a beam yeah it's not carrying a beam so all this back only here are not carrying a beam so i'm going to make it of line to just do it they are not carrying any beam whatsoever I'm going to make it of line this one also you can make it continuous to be very fast And I remove all of this. So, okay, starting from here, rather. Okay. Okay, it's a continuous line. I have to ungroup it. Control Shift G to be able to reuse it. Okay. So right now we are done with the ones at this angle. So let's come over here. We have the same lobby but the door width are different so we have a door right here why this extends right here okay I think this is how the building is. And also observe it and also see it for yourself. So we're going to place this other door right here again. We are done with that so we have a private lounge of wheat 3825 done so we can trim this and this this is no more a until Right. <coughs> I can use my alternate key to just quickly do this. So private launch master bedroom this is WC WC and a bedroom right here this is the back only and the back only so right now let's place all the doors and windows that we have not placed so we have a toilet window I use my alternate key pick it to just replace the or the or create the same thing over here I'm using my alternate key to just to do that I also have windows too that I've not placed we have one right here So where else? Okay, so let's place the doors of the toilet, alternate key also. Okay. This is lapping on the wall.
Okay, we have a bigger door. So right now I've placed all the doors and windows. So let's just place the entrance, the sit out for this private launch. So the sit out we won't make it of line because it's not carrying a beam. So the width is one five. So later you see how I'm going to make it of this line to put the sit out. So this is now for the sit out. So we can just easily use. Our alternate key to just write it out here. Sit out. Okay, done. So right now I'm going to move to the next floor, which is the paint floor. Paint floor. Now for the paint floor, we're going to just still highlight the same thing. Copy. Convert to second story and paste. Okay, now for this, there will be no staircase here. I'm going to delete this. I've we'll deleted the additional one. Okay, then you can now delete all this. It's now a paint floor, so this is where it stopped. This line extends. To the edge so this one's two and not here there's no door over here so you can see that to design a building is not much difficult but well, right now we are done we are almost done with the three floors already right now i don't almost done with the three floors so we have A distance or a length of five nine thirty five. All right, so this is around here. So these are the double dock. Move on to the edge. And we make the width to be one thousand seven one two. Because it looks smaller. Then this also. We have one right here and another around here. So. Everything here looks okay. This wardrobe you just make it of line. Once you click on it, I also edit the color of the line to be more thick in black just do this and you are done just a wardrobe line nothing else nothing special about it just as a symbol of a wardrobe i can trim that and extend this line stretch it so pick it from the node and stretch it so we are done with this so we have just we have a double door around there so welcome back to our ground floor plan use our alternate key to pick a double door and place it right here but this double door will be a double door of one two by two one and it's going to be symmetrical i'm going to change I'm going to change it to have an equal leaf. Yeah, so I'm going to have an equal leaf right here. I'm going to have an equal leaf. So around five 
zero two. We give it an equal leaf on both sides. Okay. So this is one thousand forty-four. This is one thousand forty-four. So around five seven seven. Yeah, if you, if you give an approximate equal leaf, so you click OK. So it's now have an equal leaf. Then once we are done here, I think we are done with the design. So let's see what we've done in 3D. That you right click and click on show or in 3D or any of above. So right now you can see our design, but this place has an opening because of this. So, okay, so this is what we have done. All right, now the next thing we're going to do now is to put our deck in maybe a DPC, make the building to be a little higher than the ground level, then the slabs, the two slabs for the two story. So, I'll come back to my ground floor plan, I'll make it a slab for my DPC also, I'll put the slab height. To be around um, 600 though can be flexible just can be greater than 600 or less than 600 but for me 600 is a moderate height i can also change the materials to what i want to be the top part to be can be like a tie material so you can find tie material like from here pick any tie material you love unlick it change the material that we can see to be a brick one then the under material can be it because this is a DPC. This one will be on the ground level, so we can look for an etching material. I think around here. So it's going to six hundred. Then that is it. So I'll click OK. Then I'll make sure that it's on geometric method polygonia so that will easily get all this done at once. If it's on rectangular or inclined rectangular or that you may be able to get all your shape done at once so i'm placing my dpc currently if you do a mistake if it's not exactly at that point you use backspace once you click on backspace it goes back so that is that so the final place this hammer sign will now show then you click enter or you click the right button of your mouse and let's what i've done is show all in 3d okay there is a mistake on the setting once you highlight your dpc once your slab is on 600 ensure that this is on zero it's going zero to the home story your slab thickness is 600 which is the dpc and i click ok then i click show all in 3d too so you can see after this i've successfully put a dpc damp proof than proof cost size dpc on this my building just like to to make the building to be higher than the ground level that is just one of the purpose so that it's not be in case maybe the road is kind of higher than the building this thing helps to correct it so once i'm done with that i also put my slab so I'll come back to my first story also to insert my slab so remember from my settings my slab thickness is 150 and now it's also going to zero now I, I want it to be simply in ties but this material which is the edge surface material should still be brick white so I have to complement the wall material then the underneath material cannot be ceiling because it's now at my upper floor is the decking so now it should be ceiling or ceiling time so i'll click ok and i'll start inserting my slab so this is how my slab will go Once I've done, now cross check what I've done. Perfect. So you can see I've successfully placed my slab. This, this opening has enclosed. So now let's do for this other opening right here. 
move out to the second story again and place the slab since it's actually a square right here because easily place it to be a square change geometric method to rectangular pick this edge and cover it we are done so show on 3d so currently now we have placed our decking for this building as you can see everything is well placed this is the back of the building so the beauty is already coming out so the next thing i would love us to do is for us to roof the building first once i don't roof the building then we cannot come and make this column to be more nice and put other things in place so but before we roof the building let's also maybe put the column first before we roof the building so let's come back to ground floor plan so right now i want to show you how to design your own column by yourself so make it of slab also so let's form a base we design one column once we are done with that one, then we can now multiply to the other side of 900 by 900. Enter. So I've done a base for my column. Let me change the setting of the base to be 600 or rather 900. And it's going to zero. Yes, it's going to zero. And I can change the material to be brick red or true. Now I click OK. So let me see what I've done. Okay. I can then lift this up. I want it to be above the DPC. So I lift it up by 300. Yeah. So this is the base I've done for this column. Then I come again to my ground floor plan. Just Ctrl Shift D. Duplicate a copy of this. Place it back minimize it which is offset all edges to maybe around 100 or 150 offset all edges. if it's too much can increase it also by 25 so then i'm gonna increase this thickness or rather the height i will now increase the height to around five thousand or yeah let me increase it around five five which is the total height of the column if it's not up to what is less than I'll increase it also I, I record that I did not do my settings for the height for the base so I'll come out to my ground floor plan again to this setting remember the slab height is now or thickness is now 5.5 five. now it will now come over to this building by also 5.750 let me confirm that so let me show all in 3D. Perfect. So as you can see, I'm designing the column and it's working perfectly. So this is has formed a base. Why this has formed the pillar? So let me kind of change the material to make it more distinct and fine. Let me make it a bit of a white color or any color that maybe suit it very well. Let me make it to be white color. Okay, I don't make a white color again. So let's look for another color to use. Maybe okay, let me still use a brick material. Maybe now I'll use a brick brown. Let me see. Okay, so I've used a brick brown. Remember, when you go to your rendering software, you can also change it to whatever suits you. So now I've designed a column. Now let me cap this column. I want to cap the column so with the white material. Come back to my ground floor plan. Let me cap the base first. Control Shift D. Let me cap the base. Place it back. Offset it by 30. Then I want the height to be around 100. Yeah, okay. And I can adjust it to my elevation. So I also want the material. I also want the material of my cap to be white. So I'll change this material to be white. So I think we have white around here. Yeah. So we have stone marble also white. So I've done this as a cap. So let me increase it up a bit. Okay. 
I can then control shift D. Okay. I've done the other one. So let me offset the edge of this one again more. Let me offset the edge of this more. So maybe more 20 or 20 again. So I have done the capping for this pillar. Hope you are seeing that is nice. So this is how you can design your pillar by yourself. So I can now duplicate it to the upper side of the pillar to, to also cap the one up. I want to cap this too. Okay, so it's not covering the entire. In fact, this this one inside is kind of tall. I can reduce the height by stretching height. I can reduce the height of the pillar. So as you can see, I have successfully designed a column, and it looks very very nice. So you can try out. You can even design and make it more beautiful than this. So once I'm done with it, I now I can now duplicate it to the next column. Highlight everything, duplicate, Control Shift D, set it here, and place. So let's see what I've done. So you can see that it's very very nice. So I've designed a column for this house, and it looks very very real. So now let's roof this building. We're going to roof this building using slant roof i'm going to slant roof this building i'm going to slant one to this direction and the other one to the other direction so come over to our upper floor okay this is our upper floor plan and um, everything will be done perfectly so let's come back to our second floor let's roof this one first once i don't roofing this one up we can then roof the one down so since we're going to use a slant roof which means the wall height will be higher than 3000 mm so i will come back to my mark you highlight the entire of this come to wall and control a so right now i've highlighted only wall i can then increase it height to around 4900 or 5000 any of them okay so it will now reflect in my third story because i usually roof in my upper floor floor now how i do my roofing or how it's best to do roofing is to roof at another layer or another story this will enable you to easily edit your work you have done in the previous story when you roof at that exact story it makes it harder and uneasy for you to roof effectively or to make changes rather effectively in your previous story so right now i'm going to roof my second story at my third story so I've and now I want to use flat roof. So what I will do now is I will just go straight to the roofing process. Flat roof does not have parapet or concrete fascia. It just have the roof. So I'll convert to roof. Double click or click on this layer and then start roofing. Now all settings are kind of nice. 45 degrees is okay. I'll just come over to okay and I'll roof this building. I'll make sure that since my since the building is square, I can just make it to be construction method can just be rectangle. Yeah, then I just roof this building like this. It has been roofed. Remember, it's now roofed in heap format. It's roofed as a heap roof. Yeah, it's now roofed as a heap. I haven't seen it in the 3D. It's roofed like a heap roof. But what I want is a slant roof now how to make your roof in a slant roof is just simple once you highlight your roof ctrl shift g ungroup your roof once you group it right click you will see something like split into single plane roof in your archicad once you right click your mouse you see split to single plane roof Just click on it and click on split anyway so right now successfully splitted my roof into single plane but right now it's thin group so i'll click on ctrl shift g again to ungroup it so i'll ungroup the roof and so now i cannot delete this side of the roof that i don't need because i need a slant roof so i can then 
move this to this edge and move this one to this other edge using move node so right now i've made my roofing to be just one sheet and i can now offset all edges to do an offset of around 500 is not fixed you can offset yours much more greater or lesser but i think around 500 600 is an average so i can then see it in 3d what i've done so far so as you can see now the roofing is now a slant roof but it is so high it is too high so to easily do this i can go to my elevation i can open an elevation so i've opened this elevation so right now we're going to bring this roof in to where it's meant to be the roof is meant to be around this area the base is meant to be around this area so i'm going to bring it down there then i'll come back to this edge here and drag it down as i'm dragging it down this box will show you then see change roof pitch i'll click on it and i'll change the roof pitch to be around here then let's see all in 3d again so perfectly so right now i've created a slant roof for my design as you can see i've created a slant roof for my design but this wall is still coming up now to easily remove this wall in your slant roof it's just very simple just one step come back to your top to the right place you placed your roof use on mark you cover the entire process click on wall because it's only the walls are coming out Control a highlight all your wall come to roofing again Control a highlight your roof right click click on connect once you see connect click on trim element to roof or shell once you did it then click on trim then let's see what that's done show on 3d perfect you can see it has removed all the excess wall from it so right now i now have a slant roof a perfect slant roof so let's do the same for this other story now this is our first story we're going to roof it as our second story layer so this is where we're going to roof this building but before that we'll have to also increase the height of this building of this wall right here i'll use mark you so this is where the roof is going to cover first with small show you can right click click on trace choose preference and trace above story so which means that it's the roofing starts from here and move back you can confirm it yeah it started from here back so we can just use mark you and cover this area wall highlight all the wall right here so perfect you can see this is are the walls that are going to carry the slant roof of this area so we can change the pitch or the roof height to be to, so we can add extra 1900 or 2000 okay to now reflect in our second story now so as you can see it reflected in our second story so we can join this to this or rather you can just use this and join this to this to be on the same level now we're going to roof this building now we're using slant roof now we'll come over to roof again then we can roof this building now we remove it from a rectangular because this shape is not rectangle so we'll continue to complex roof and use your shift key to ensure that it's straight remember when you click whenever you click the wrong edge Whenever you click the wrong edge, remember to just click on backscape, back, backspace to correct yourself. When you not click the right point, so okay. Right now, I've roofed this building. Now, since it wants to be a slant roof, and then we can then start by right clicking when, when after you have highlighted the roof click on split into single plane roofs split anyway after splitting then you can then delete the roof if you don't want by ungrouping first ctrl shift g after ungrouping they can then start deleting so i don't need this i don't need this i also don't need this i don't need this i don't need this so this is the only roofing sheet i need 
I can bring this one right here, create a new node, put it right here, move this node right here, and move this node right here. So you can see it's what I've done in 3D also. So this is how the roofing is. So we're going to do the same process. But before that, let's offset the roofing. I'm going to offset all edge. Offset all edge by what? 500 again. Then we're going to open an elevation. That open an elevation will bring this thing down to that elevation mark. So I brought it down. We can then bring this one down to by ensure that this is on slant change of pitch so perfectly we have roofed this building we have roofed this one to be one side or have roofed the other to be on that side so this is how to roof a building so to remove this excess wall we to do the, repeat the same process just highlight the roofing and the wall that you want to trim highlight all of them together then once you highlight them, right click, click on connect, trim element to roof shell, and click on trim. So let's see you're in 3D again. Okay, so we have extra one word that we did not highlight. Why is why this one is not trimmed? It's because we didn't highlight it. So we'll come back to the so to where, where the roof is. Then we highlight it now. After highlighting it, you can highlight the ones that are in SS. Right click. Click on connect it to only trim the one that are SS. Click on trim. So successfully, we have roof this building with slant roof. This one is slanted to the direction, and the other one by the back is, is slanted to the direction. So right now you can see the beauty of this house. It looks so real. So it looks so real. So this is how to roof your house using a slant roof. This is how to roof. Business land roof.